Welcome to Market Dojo's RFQ Overview. Within this demonstration, we will show you how to build, manage and award an RFQ event, which includes some initial questions for participants. We'll also cover how participation will work from your supplier's perspective. In order to show you this, I'm first going to go to the sandpit. The sandpit is our test environment where you can try things out before inviting real suppliers. Inside the sandpit, you can create a new event and then switch to acting as a participant here in the top right corner. This means you have the ability to work through the process from both sides. For new users, we strongly recommend practicing in the sandpit before creating your first event in the live site. So let's get started and create a new event. You can build an event from scratch or clone and edit a past event. In this case, we're going to build a new event. First, we'll give the event a name that's easy for suppliers to understand. For example, in this case, we'll call it IT hardware. You can choose the currency that will apply to your event or select the multi-currency option if you'd like suppliers to bid in local currency. Next, add your event summary. This should give suppliers a good overview of what the event is for, who you are, what you need, and any other key information. The brief will be sent to your suppliers in their initial invitation email, so it's important that you include a sufficient level of detail to ensure that people are encouraged to participate without overloading them with information. Now we'll build the skeleton or structure of our event. Here, Market Dojo provides three optional stages that can be included. Questionnaire, RFQ, or e-auction. Including a questionnaire stage will allow you to ask your suppliers a number of questions, which may or may not relate to pricing. Selecting RFQ will allow you to gain pricing from your participants, which can then be ranked by the tool to show you who has placed the best bids. Adding an e-auction stage means that suppliers will be invited to participate in a live auction. You can choose to include one or more of these stages to ensure that your event fits your needs. To select your stages, just click the associated boxes. Today, it will include a questionnaire and an RFQ. When adding a questionnaire, first we need to give the set of questions a name and a deadline for completion. We'll add the questions themselves at a later stage. Questionnaires can be pre-qualification and can include both scoring and weighting if this is important for your event. In this case though, we'll just keep things simple and leave these boxes blank. Now we'll add our RFQ settings. This includes the deadline for the bids to be submitted by and the bid direction. If you're looking for participants to provide their lowest price, this will always be reverse. Once the structure has been created, we can go to the next step and start adding content. Supporting documents can be added to the event via the Documents tab. Documents can be added manually or from your document library. You can choose whether to send them with the invite email. Once you're finished, move to the next stage. We're now going to add our questions. If you've built a questionnaire before, you can save it as a template and reuse it for future events. However, here we will build one from scratch. Your questionnaires can contain as much or as little information as you want. Each questionnaire can have multiple sections and each section multiple questions. For example, in this case, our question could be, please confirm that you have read our terms and conditions. Questions can be optional or mandatory, and for each question, you can choose from a range of response types. These include multiple choice, a longer text response, or requiring a document upload. For this question, we can select the yes, no option. For longer lists of questions, you can use our Excel upload option here. Once the questions are added, you can progress to the next step. We're now going to build our lots. Here we have two options, simple and advanced. When using simple lots, you will list your item names and the participants will provide pricing. 
Simple lots are the quickest and easiest pricing option, and in scenarios where all you are looking for is a number of item prices, this will be the most suitable option. For more complicated pricing, you should use our advanced lots. Using advanced lots, you can include multiple prices per item, as well as text and number fields and complex calculations. Here we're going to build some simple lots. Each lot requires a name, the quantity needed, and the unit of measure, such as each if you're looking for pricing per item, ton for pricing by weight, or box of six if that's how the item comes. Our RFQ savings are calculated based on the current price, so we strongly recommend you add a figure here. Our tool will then compare the bids received in the RFQ against this current price. If you don't have information on existing pricing, we recommend stating your budget instead. If you'd like to restrict participants from placing bids that are too high, you can also set a qualification price. You can add more lots if needed, or upload an Excel template if you have several line items. Once you're finished, move to the next stage. Finally, we invite our suppliers. As we're in the sandpit, our only option is to invite our sandpit companies from the database. However, for your live events, you'll have the choice of inviting either a predefined group, uploading an Excel list, or adding any supplier by their email. To make your event live and send an invitation email to your suppliers, click on the Invite Participants and Finish button. I'm now going to switch to a supplier view to show you what they will see. After clicking on the email link, the participant will see the invitation, select the event and accept it. The first thing your suppliers will see when accessing the event is the brief you provided, as well as your contact details and a breakdown of the process. They will then navigate along the tabs at the top from left to right to work through the whole event. If you've asked your suppliers to answer questions, this will be the first section they need to complete. Once the questions are answered, the participant may then move on to bid in the RFQ by clicking on the Place Bid button, adding their quote, and then clicking on Submit. Once the pricing has been provided, from the supplier's perspective, all tasks are complete. At any time, including after having submitted their bid, a participant may send a message to the host. These are often questions or clarifications. They can access the documents you've attached here in the documents section, as well as any documents they've uploaded. Now let's switch back to a host view. Any messages sent by participants throughout the process will clearly show in your messages tab. The Participants tab will show you who has accepted the event, as well as who the invite email has been delivered to and who's opened it. It's worth keeping an eye on this tab throughout to see if there's anyone you need to chase. The Questionnaire tab will show you all participant responses, so you can easily compare. You can also export this data into Excel. Participant pricing will show on the RFQ tab. Here you will clearly see the best bid for each item and which participant has placed this bid. You can also expand this out to see the pricing from each participant. Once the RFQ deadline has passed, you can export the reports to analyse in Excel. You can add another round of bidding, or if you'd like, you can award the business through the tool. To award the business, just choose the participant you wish to award the business to, tick the box to send them a message, and update the text. You can include a purchase order number if you'd like. Once you are finished, you can send the award notice. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully this has shown you how easy it is to create, participate in, and manage an RFQ. However, if you have any questions on this, please don't hesitate to contact our support team.